Ocarinas. You see them everywhere, from popular video game franchises to Renaissance Festival shops. Or maybe those are the only places you see them. Anyway, in this video, I want to talk about the ocarina. What is it? Where did it come from? And how does it fit into the canon of music history? Before we start, make sure to like this video and subscribe. That's the best way to support this channel and to make sure new videos keep coming out. On with the feature presentation. The ocarina is a wind instrument, specifically a vessel flute. That means the body of the instrument is used to make sound. Think of blowing across the top of an empty bottle to get a pitch. Because of the simple design, the ocarina can be traced back around 12,000 years to a number of different cultures. Mayan and Aztec ocarinas found their way into European courts when conquistadors led Mesoamerican expeditions in the 16th century. At the time, the ocarina was thought of as a toy, until the 19th century when a man named Giuseppe Donati redesigned the ocarina to be a more complete musical instrument. This design is often referred to as the classical ocarina. The word ocarina comes from Italian, which translates to little goose. This is due to the ocarina sounding like a little goose, I guess. I can see it. In 1964, an English mathematician named John Taylor created a new fingering system for the ocarina which allowed it to play a chromatic scale with just four holes. This became known as the English fingering system and is still used today. And of course, in 1998, Nintendo released the magnum opus The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, introducing new crowds of musicians and gamers to the instrument. So that's a brief 12,000 year history of the ocarina. But what's up with the weird shape, and how does it actually work? The transverse ocarina is the most common design. Consisting of either 10 or 12 holes, it's shaped like a sweet potato and is held horizontally with both hands. I really like the ocarina because it's pretty easy to pick up and play, but it can also introduce a lot of musical concepts that will help with learning other instruments, specifically woodwinds, later on in a student's musical journey. As I was practicing the ocarina for this video, I noticed that I was consistently a half step flat. This made me pull out a tuner and really focus on my airflow and consistency. And when changing notes, I had to make sure my fingers were quick and accurate to open and close the holes cleanly. These skills are invaluable to any woodwind or brass player. It reminds me a lot of the recorder. The instrument itself can make some really beautiful music, but the idea of it being a toy and people not knowing about the ocarina in general has maybe stopped that from happening. While most of the repertoire for ocarina is lifted from other instruments like the recorder and the flute, there are a few composers and compositions that require the ocarina specifically. Ligti's Concerto for Violin, written in 1933, calls for four ocarinas to double other woodwind parts. And in 1974, the Polish composer Krzysztof Penderecki incorporated 12 ocarinas in his composition The Dream of Jacob. And Koji Kondo is credited for writing the music for both Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which heavily feature the ocarina. Now, with the knowledge of where the ocarina came from, how it works, and compositions that used it, I set out to write my own ocarina piece. Here's the finished product. <laughs>
And that's the video. If you liked this song, let me know in the comments below and share this video so more people can discover the ocarina. Subscribe to know when I upload my next video and thanks for watching.